cheating, infidelity, being unfaithful. I remember when I was a teenager thinking that there was a very clear line between cheating and not cheating. And I would always say things like, if somebody ever cheated on me, I would dump them immediately. Now I consider myself very lucky because at least to my knowledge, I haven't been cheated on, although I do have one suspicion from when I was 15 that I couldn't care less about now. So my, I will dump them immediately was entirely hypothetical. I had a very black and white view of what cheating was, but now for me, it's completely about context. And I cannot say anymore with any certainty what I would do if somebody cheated on me. So this video is going to be all about what counts as cheating in that messy gray area, what our different personal boundaries are, does technology make things any different? And I want to encourage you to think really specifically about how you define cheating for yourself personally, but then also in the context of your relationships. Before we begin, hello, I'm Hannah Witten. I make videos about sex and relationships. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, we are on the road to 1,000 patrons and my patrons are a wonderful, amazing group of people who help make these videos and my podcast possible where we can have these open discussions about sex and relationships and just be curious and explore all of these things in the hopes of destigmatizing and making it all seem a bit more normal and approachable and not anything to be ashamed of. I have lots of exciting plans for when we hit 1000 patrons. So if you want to join the common room, there's a link in the description. You can go and check it out and just thank you. Thank you so much. So I thought we would begin with the impossible task of defining cheating. So what is cheating? So I'm in a three year long relationship with someone that agrees with me on what I'm about to say. And for me, cheating only counts as such if there is an element of emotional attachment and commitment to it. Meaning that you crave that person's attention, you wanna spend time with them, you cannot help but caring for them in a very deep way. And ultimately look for ways to grow emotional intimacy at the expense of your current and let's say primary relationship, which is why I consider it to be cheating because you start to uh, neglect your current relationship for that other person. This means that having sex with someone or even date them in a casual way doesn't really constitute cheating in my current relationship and I guess makes it an open one. Cheating for me is a romantic connection with any other person so anything from messaging to physical touch would be cheating. Porn, live shows and flirting don't count as cheating. Me and my partner have discussed this. I feel like the boundaries can be blurred a lot. So you need to have a real discussion with your partner about what is and isn't okay in each relationship. I know many of my friends wouldn't find porn okay or flirting okay. So cheating to me within a serious relationship or marriage consists of having sex with someone else who isn't your partner, kissing someone else who isn't your partner, pursuing other people whilst you are knowingly in a committed relationship, and lastly, giving an SDI unbeknownst to your partner and not being truthful about it. A firm boundary for me is to always be truthful regardless of what you think the outcome might be, and a flexible boundary for me would be watching porn, but this is also dependent on how regular or consistently my partner is watching it. So I've split cheating up in my head into four categories and you are welcome to discuss and debate these. And also I'm not entirely sure if some would count as cheating, but certainly a type of betrayal. So we've got sexual cheating and this could include things like flirting, sexting, kissing, other sexual acts. And I'm not saying that all of these things are 100% definitely cheating, just that they could potentially fall under that category. So then we've got emotional cheating and that could include things like catching feels for somebody else, really wanting to be around another person a lot, you know, that like drive when you've got a crush on somebody. And then also that certain kind of vulnerability and intimacy and sharing with someone else. So the third category is relational and I had trouble kind of like figuring out what could potentially go into this category, but things I came up with were like gift giving and receiving. And obviously that is not 
inherently cheating, but like context. There might be some things where you're like, that's kind of weird that you got that person that specific present or that that person gave you something. Like, I think there's definitely like murky areas that could be there potentially. Unless your love language is gift giving and then you're just like, I love everybody, gifts, gifts, gifts. And then also things like activities, like things that you do together. So this could be holidays or trips or experiences. And the way that I was thinking about this in the context of cheating is that it could be that you and your partner always talk about doing X together and it's something that you really want to do. And then without telling them, you go off and do that thing with somebody else. Maybe you don't fancy them, you're not kissing them, you're not having sex with them, like nothing like that. But there's still like the portrayal there of like, oh, I thought that was gonna be our thing. And the fourth category is planning for the future. And in this, I've included financial cheating. And so if you are in a committed relationship where you are sharing finances, getting into debt without your partner knowing or like spending a certain amount of money without your partner's prior permission or a conversation about it could potentially be considered cheating or an act of betrayal in general. And then another thing that I thought about around this was in terms of birth control. So like either going on birth control or coming off birth control or getting a vasectomy or a hysterectomy without prior conversation in that relationship about what your plans were for having kids or not having kids. So that's how I've broadly defined cheating, but I think the main ones that we'll be focusing on in this video is the sexual and emotional. What counts as cheating, I would say, is sexting, video calling, making sexual, like, innuendos uh, to another person. And I would say meeting another female or male in public without maybe your partner being there. And obviously, if uh, they're saying, oh, I'm not meeting someone, I would say that counts as cheating in a way. I'm asexual. So for me, I guess cheating always has to have either sexual involvement, but more so emotional involvement. I would never consider something like VR or pornography to be cheating unless I saw that my partner like actually had emotional connections with that porn star for some reason. My view on what cheating is has drastically changed since I met my partner. When I met my partner, I was 16, I was a very strong religious person, and I believed that porn and masturbation were cheating. Since then, I've come out as non-binary, I'm no longer religious, and also my disability has got worse, which means that I'm not always able to have sex. So masturbation is a great option, uh, and it's a great way for me to get to know myself better and for my partner to get to know himself better. So when I was a teenager, I went out with this guy for a few months and we were long distance-ish um, and he was a little bit older than me but he actually ended up getting really close with his boss's daughter which was really, really weird and I had a problem with it from the get-go even though they were sort of, they were friends but long story short, they were chatting for ages and we actually went to a party at one of his friend's houses and he'd been talking to her all night and she was having a really bad day so I sort of like let it off a bit but he actually left the party to go and see her and left me with her as his friends and although, as far as I'm aware, there was no um, actions as such, it very much felt like emotional cheating. Like I knew he was far more invested in her than me. So yeah, I never saw him again after that party. Is it cheating if? So I ran some polls on my Instagram stories with a bunch of different scenarios and asked people if they considered that thing cheating. So I wanted to run through some of the results with you because you know how I love me a good sexy survey. So the first one was, is it cheating if your partner watches porn? And 2% said yes and 98% said no. Feels like a pretty clear consensus there amongst my audience. Is it cheating if your partner watches porn almost always featuring the same porn star? And in this case, 5% said yes and 95% said no. So still that very clear consensus, but a few people would find watching porn in general okay, but if it was always like them watching the same person, then that kind of like tipped into the like, mm, I'm less comfortable with this category. Is it cheating if your partner flirts with someone else right in front of you? And 46% said yes and 54% said no. So this might be something that you want to talk to your partner about just to check which side of that line they fall onto, but also if there's any specific context that would either make it okay for them or not okay for them. Is it cheating if your partner was messaging their ex? And 38% said yes and 62% said no. I think this is another one where like 
context is very important. Like, how did that relationship end? Do they still have feelings for their ex? Are they just like amicable friends? Do you know their ex? Are you friends? Like, lots of context. <laughs> is it cheating if your partner is sexting with someone else? And 96% said yes, and 4% said no. Another pretty clear consensus. Is it cheating if your partner had phone sex with someone else and 98% said yes and 2% said no? And obviously that's another very clear consensus, but also some people are like, sexting fine, phone sex, no. And I wonder if that's got anything to do with like the slight disconnect that we might have when we're typing compared to if we're using our voice and hearing somebody else's voice. Is it cheating if your partner used interactive VR porn with teledictonic toys? And I clarified this with, it's like you're seeing yourself virtually having sex with a porn star and like feeling the sensations uh, through the toy. And 39% said yes and 61% said no. So whereas the vast majority of people were okay with their partner just watching porn, as soon as it becomes like this more virtual reality experience, a lot more people are like, mm, no. But again, context, why is that something that they want? Are they just curious or like, is it taking away from the sexual relationship that they have with their partner? Who knows? And finally, is it cheating if we just slept in the same bed, nothing happened? And this is so fascinating to me because it's almost a 50-50 split. 49% said yes, that is cheating and 51% said no, it is not cheating. And I forgot to say how many people answered this survey, 54,000 people. So we got a good sample, but the, we just slept in the same bed, nothing happened. I think just the like the 50-50 split down the middle just goes to show like how much context <laughs> is important there. So obviously that was a very simplistic little poll, but I have some follow-up questions for people to kind of stew on, some food for thought. So think about your answers to those questions and then think about, does your answer change depending on if it was with a stranger or with somebody that they knew or if it was with an ex? What if the thing that they're doing is with a complete stranger or a different person every time? Or what if it's always with the same person? So in that case, I'm thinking like, what if they just go on online chat rooms and like do like sexy talk with people online, but it's always just strangers, right? Or versus what if they're always doing that with the same person? Another example could be what if they like to go to strip clubs and receive lap dances and it's just always a different stripper every time? Or what if it's always the same stripper every time? Does that change things? Maybe the behavior in itself is okay, but what if that behavior takes away from the attention and affection that you're getting in the relationship? What is the difference between flirting with somebody else in person versus flirting with somebody else over text? Are those two different things? And then the we just slept in the same bed, nothing happened question. What if that is true, they slept in the same bed, absolutely nothing happened, but what if there were vibes? What if that person actually had a crush on the other person? What if they were aroused in general by the situation? What if they wanted something to happen? So that statement is true, but what else is happening? <laughs> and I don't mean to make everyone like super paranoid. What I mean by this kind of like exercise is just kind of like, what actually are your boundaries? What are the details? And we'll get onto details later. I think personally to me what's intriguing is that I would classify sexting as a form of cheating. But if my partner flirted with someone else before my eyes, I, I wouldn't really be that phased, I don't think. But that's really interesting because it's odd the flirting before your eyes has more physical weight really because the person's actually there whereas sexting is really just talking to a screen but maybe it's because with sexting your partner's whole attention would be focused on talking to that person in a sexy way so there's more sexual emotion attached whereas flirting is kind of more of a common occurrence i think that cheating is always just a lack of communication so for the uh, slept in the same bed but nothing happened example, if my boyfriend told me, oh, I'm out after a party and um, I'm with my best friend uh, and there's only one bed, uh, are you fine with us sleeping in the same one? And he does it, then that's not cheating. However, if I say no, 
and he does it anyway. I'm sorry, but that is cheating to me. And different couples in different relationships just set different boundaries for cheating. I think it's super, super, super contextual. I know that, like, I personally will never view watching porn of any kind um, to be cheating, but also, like, I could understand feeling uncomfortable with it because, like, that is like, well, what does that person have that I don't have? But I think that that's a really insular way of thinking about it. And I know that, like, with past partners, um, I would be more uncomfortable with them, like, flirting with someone else. Whereas, like, with my current partner, because we talk a lot about boundaries and talk a lot about how much we mean to each other and, like, trust and stuff, it's a much longer relationship. And we've built a very, like, communicative one. I think I would find it a lot more, like, funny if my partner, like, flirted with someone in front of me. Because I know that, like, I'm very important to my partner. And I know that nothing will change that. So this submission was sent in via text, so I'm just going to read it out to you. I had no issue with my now husband watching porn, and I think we'd discuss this, but then I found out he was watching cam girls or browsing subreddits like r slash gone wild. Another equivalent today would be OnlyFans. The point is that these were women putting the content out there themselves. My instinct was that I felt less okay about that, and I had the horrific realization that it's because these women had autonomy, and that made them seem more like real people, and therefore more of a threat to me. I was relying on the dehumanization of women in more mainstream porn to make me feel okay about my partner watching it, and that's awful. After realizing this, I forced myself to get over it because with proper reflection, of course, I would rather he consumed more ethical porn, but I'm still haunted by that gut reaction I had. Figuring out our personal boundaries. So how do we actually know how we feel and what our boundaries are when it comes to cheating without having to like go through it first? How do we figure it out hypothetically? I think literally sitting down and doing things like this of being like, would it count as cheating if X? Would it count as cheating if X? And like trying to go like really specific and really kind of unfiltered to try and put words to how you're feeling. And this can be something that you do by yourself first, but then can be super beneficial as something to do with a partner. And I think it's important to remember that our boundaries around things like this aren't always PC. So that could be the example of your gut reaction being that subscribing to someone on OnlyFans is worse than consuming free mainstream porn. It could also be that you're okay with your bisexual girlfriend kissing other women, but not other men. And I think it's important to find this balance between your partner still honoring your maybe not so PC boundaries, but also you doing the internal work to interrogate them and seeing if there is any room for you to change your mind and figuring out why you might feel that way. Can those boundaries change? Do you even want them to change? Are those maybe non-PC boundaries that you have not an issue in your relationship and it's like absolutely fine and your partner's like, yeah, that's okay. So I'm a bisexual woman in a monogamous relationship and my partner just happens to be a straight male. One of the things we discussed about what cheating means for us is that it doesn't make a difference if it's a man or a woman. Both of them are cheating if it's any form of act. However, he said that it would, he would be more bothered if I kissed a man on a night out than if I kissed a friend that is a woman on a night out. However, if that woman is also attracted to women, then it's more of an issue and it would bother him more. He still feels uncomfortable no matter what the situation is, but he doesn't classify it as cheating if I'm kissing a friend who's a woman who is straight or if they're woman in a relationship regardless of their sexuality. So it's a really interesting and very varied topic for us. But we have those boundaries in place and I honour his and he honours mine. As a former stripper, I've had conflicts with um, past and prospective partners about what counts as cheating in the context of my work, something I think that many other current and former sex workers have also experienced. Someone may consider you to be cheating when you're at work if you're given a lap dance or providing any other sexual services for another person. Actually, it's just work and entirely separate from a sex worker's personal relationship. Of course, everyone has their boundaries and this is something that needs to be discussed openly openly because prejudice against sex workers leads to discrimination and violence. There's a huge misconception that sex workers are more likely to cheat on their partners or that our jobs make us somehow morally deficient. My husband and I would count cheating as engaging in sexual acts with another person without discussion first. If we discussed it with each other and consented to it then it's not cheating. 
We have a standing agreement that I, being a bisexual woman, am allowed to flirt with and kiss girls, and while he'd be okay with it without me checking, I'd still always check first. This is another text submission. I was wondering if you'd also consider asking what people's boundaries were in regards to posting photos of yourself on a forum or a site like OnlyFans. I thought this kind of behavior seemed very normal, it's my body, and I can use photos of it however I feel and consent to. However, when I brought this up to partners or friends, they have not all felt the same way, and several people thought this kind of action was considered cheating. I'm not looking for the right or wrong of it, just curious if anyone feels the same way. And I thought this would be a good question to pose to the comment section, like, what do you think? So I'm generally a monogamous person, but I was having a bit of a wild time um, on my year abroad and ended up trying polyamory because the guy I was dating turned out to be poly. I didn't love the idea, but I said it was okay for him to date and have sex with other people and have other girlfriends or partners. But my stipulation was that I wanted to be told as soon as he started another relationship. One day, maybe five months into us dating, he told me he'd been dating another woman for the past three months. I didn't know how to feel because although the sex and other relationship itself weren't cheating, I felt like I'd been betrayed by him not telling me. In the end, we ended up dating for about nine months and then breaking up because I started dating my current boyfriend and we wanted to be monogamous. I'm still friends with my ex, but looking back, I do think that this was a form of cheating. I think a lot of people think polyamory means there's no such thing as cheating. There definitely is, but everything comes down to discussion, to knowing what your partner's doing. So if a partner of mine could have sex with someone else or have sexual relations of any form with someone else, that would be fine as long as we talked about it. If we haven't talked about it, that is cheating. On the other hand, a lot of the, I suppose, more minor things that I know a lot of people compute as cheating just don't even cross in my head. And I feel like even if I was monogamous, things like partner liking a particular porn star, sharing a bed with someone, happening to see someone naked, but it's not necessarily like in a sexual situation. But even if you're in a monogamous relationship, I think talking through what you both think is cheating is the key to not accidentally cheating on each other because you have different views on that. The impact of technology on infidelity. I feel that sexting and anything virtual should count as cheating depending on what you say so I think flirting it depends what they're saying but if it's sexting if they're being explicit whether they're sending videos or being explicit in their messages um, the intention is there to hide something from your partner which is what happened to me um, someone was hiding this from me who I was with and they even admitted that if they could have gotten away with it, they would have slept with that person, but they felt that they could hide behind this screen and so got away with it. So yes, I do think virtually it still counts as cheating. I'm really curious about if you think that tech makes it easier for people to cheat. Are people who would otherwise be faithful cheating because of the opportunity and ease that technology allows, or are people who would have been cheating anyway just cheating in different and new ways? What do you think? Do we feel the same about stuff that happens in a virtual context versus in person with someone? Like, how does that change things? I have only questions. If virtual sex is considered a form of cheating, then it's not the physicality of sex that matters in this situation. So what is the thing that does matter? And one of the things that I thought it might be is that is infidelity actually about desire? So it's not necessarily about what you do, but it's about what you want to do. And what are your intentions? What do you want to get out of a virtual sex experience? What feelings and what emotions are you seeking out? Fidelity agreements, it's all in the details. Cheating comes down to the terms of your relationship and so it's very context dependent but ultimately it is when you break the terms of your relationship. And so actually I think when it comes down to cheating the most important thing is making sure you very clearly define the terms of your relationship. I think the conversation around porn is an interesting one and I've actually spoken to a lot of my friends about this before and we've all agreed that we don't think it's cheating. However that does not mean it'll be the case for everyone so if you find yourself asking whether or not something you did is cheating then just take a moment to realise that it isn't necessarily black or white and you're probably going to need to have a conversation with your partner about it. I would consider cheating to be anything you do uh, with another person without your primary partner's consent. 
Now I say primary partner because uh, my partner is on the asexual spectrum. So we're navigating an open relationship at the moment, but we set up a lot of boundaries with that. I think in the context of that, there's a lot to be navigated. But I think if you set up a boundary with your partner and then cross that boundary, so if your partner doesn't want you to kiss anyone else, and then you do, then I think that's cheating. But if your partner is okay with you kissing other people but not sleeping with them, and then you sleep with someone, then I think that's cheating. It's any sort of act that betrays your partner's trust in a sexual way. So my partner and I are in a long-term, long-distance relationship. What I would consider cheating would be anything outside of what we'd already agreed in our relationship. One of my requirements is that every different person or occasion has to be okayed with me beforehand. So if there was any occasion or person that happened outside of being agreed on beforehand, that would then be cheating for me and vice versa. So I've been talking a lot about really getting into the details of what you consider cheating. And a fidelity agreement is basically figuring out what that is within your relationship or relationships. It could be just a conversation that you have, or you could like literally write this stuff down so that you remember like, these things are in our fidelity agreement. You might have different sections, like these things are completely fine, these things are a bit icky, context dependent, and these things are just like a hard no. Not with anyone, not in any context, like no. But one thing I want to add about the details is that it can all change. Like these fidelity agreements should be flexible, living, breathing documents if you do decide to create a document. And whilst the specifics of the agreement might change, the thing that probably won't change is how you want to feel and how you don't want to feel. So try and figure out how it is that you want to feel. Do you want to feel safe, loved, appreciated, admired, adored? What do you not want to feel? Anxious, neglected, foolish. Focusing on the feelings is a really great thing because you're focusing on the outcome. What is the goal? What are you all trying to achieve with the details? Because even if you have like the perfect communication and you like talk about all of these things and you know exactly what each other's boundaries are, there will be times where a gray issue arises. You might have a disagreement about a fidelity issue and you might say, well, I wasn't technically cheating because I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And maybe that's true, but what was the outcome? How did your partner feel because of your actions? And were you very much aware that your actions would result in those feelings? The way that I've heard this being described is that it's really about honoring the spirit of the agreement. So the spirit of the agreement is the outcome, how you want to feel, how you don't want to feel. And then the technicalities of the agreement is how you do that. To me, cheating is going outside of any agreed boundaries with the relationship, especially where there is an intent to deceive the other person. So I used to be in a polyamorous relationship and it would be very hard to define cheating by the act itself, such as sexting or flirting or sleeping with someone. But it's absolutely possible to cheat in an open or polyamorous relationship to us we agreed complete transparency and full disclosure so if somebody did something with somebody else and didn't disclose it we would have considered that cheating so from a list what counts as cheating for me is phone sex sexting and sleeping with someone else and i think it has to do a lot with context communication and trust i have let my partner know that we can talk about these things and um I have my personal boundaries, he has his personal boundaries, and I think through communication and trust, we can come to a happy medium in, when it comes to their relationship boundaries. Another submission said, in general, I like to define cheating as any behavior anyone in the relationship has agreed is not okay. That's not perfect because I guess it would include non-relationshipy breaches of trust, such as murder. And I also think but we didn't explicitly predefine having sex with this other person as cheating would be received poorly and rightfully so. My partner and I have a really open communication between each other. We talk about pretty much everything. There's certain things that don't come up, but if either one of us is actively having to keep a secret and actively avoid a subject or avoid talking about something with the other, then that's probably a good indication for 
there being something wrong there. He was having a conversation with somebody that he felt was cheating. The likelihood is he wouldn't come to me and talk talk about it anyway. So if he's keeping it a secret or I'm keeping a secret from him, then that's a fairly clear indicator. I think cheating should always come down to your personal boundaries by yourself and as a couple. And it's like, if you've had your trust violated or your feelings hurt, then I guess that counts as cheating. But I think cheating as a term has been like malused and adapted and like has all of these connotations and like all of these like really intense meanings and feelings attached to it, which obviously in a lot of places are warranted. But I think what a large majority of the public, especially like in the UK and the US and the Western public, sees as cheating isn't necessarily cheating for everyone and that's okay. Cheating in general just discludes polyamory from the conversation. It's very like, I think the media especially likes to set it out as a black and white topic and it's just not. And then another thing that I wanted to bring up is the difference between secrecy and privacy and the secrecy thing has come up in like loads of the clips that we have seen and heard of people saying that it's not about what you do but it's about the other person not consenting to it the other person not knowing about it like hiding from the other person it's the secrecy part that's the betrayal not necessarily what you do you could even have something that is on your list of like yeah that is totally fine to do that is okay you can absolutely go do that but then you hide it, maybe it might mean something different now. Who knows? So secrecy is actively hiding something from someone and privacy is being unobserved and having your own personal private experience. And having privacy in a relationship is about setting those healthy boundaries. But having secrecy in a relationship is not ideal. What do you think about all of this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you to everyone who sent in video clips and voice notes for this video. I really, really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. And another thing that I would be really curious to hear about in the comments is depending on where in the world you live, are there different cultural norms around what cheating is? Because obviously I'm coming from a very European, Western centric point of view here and maybe in different cultures or different religions there's different customs and norms and expectations when it comes to fidelity and if you have any thoughts to share on that I'd also love to hear from you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!